Hey guys, how's it going? Um, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, being lied to. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys have had to buy a firewall at some point. And uh, I'm going to tell you all the dirty secrets about how the data sheets are made and how you can make better decisions about buying better ones. Um, because that's all I've done for my entire career. Um, so speaking of which, uh, my name is Chuck. Uh, I work at a company called Ixie Communications. Um, I work at home. Uh, I'm very lucky to have the privilege of doing that. Uh, I live up in the Boston area. So, um, you know, don't give me grief about the uh, black and golds, guys. I haven't been paying any attention yet. So, um, and uh, I've been uh, testing network security, inline network security devices for 15 years, basically my entire adult life since I got out of college. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about some of the findings and some of the stuff that I just sort of know about how that industry works and uh, hopefully help you guys figure out better ways of, of uh, making better informed decisions. So um, firewall data sheets have some level of truth to them. The question becomes, what is that truth? And is that actually of actionable value to me? Is it something that I can actually use, take, lay them out in front of each other and compare them against each other and figure out whether or not they actually uh, are, are like for like, right? Um, I'm also going to talk to you today um, about how the data sheets are made themselves. So we're going to look at the testing methodologies that are put in place for this. We're going to look at uh, publicly available information uh, that, that you can go and look at yourself to see how these methodologies are actually used. And I'm going to sort of give you the crib sheet on the, the problems with them. i um, going to talk a little bit about false and incorrect assumptions about you know, how everything must be the same because it looks like it's the same. Just because something looks like it's the same doesn't mean that it is. Um, and I'm going to suggest some improvements um, in terms of like what, what could be done to make life better for everyone in here. So we all know this lovely quote. Um, there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damned lies, and statistics. This is commonly attributed to Mark Twain, but uh, I went and found out that he didn't say that. Um, so I don't actually know who said it. It's a really, really old quote. Um, which is kind of fun to dive down. Um, but in reality, what, what we're really dealing with here is uh, the fact that you've got these different statistics on different data sheets. And we'll just load up the first one to look at it. This is uh, Cisco's ASA uh, matrix for making a decision about which firewall you want. Um, this is a little bit old, but I went online last night and they have the exact same footnotes and everything everywhere. Um, and you'll notice that just about every single um, statistic that you're looking at has a little note next to it. And then it looks like it's backed up with uh, something that sounds very technical and serious about how, how this is done. So it, it, it's been, uh, you know, vetted. Um, and, and, and the reality is, is that this is how it's tested, right? Um, so maximum bandwidth and throughput with UDP measured under ideal test conditions. So they've, given, they've told you that they've given you the, the best possible number that they can get out of this, right? Um, number two, they say it's multi-protocol traffic with primarily TCP-based applications like HTTP, SMTP, FTP, blah, 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 right? Um, so you, you have a certain level of assurity here. And if you're sort of uh, just sort of wrapping your head around this a little bit, it looks like this is, this, is, this, is, this is the work's been done. And the work has been done. But you don't know enough. So then you go on the Checkpoints website and you look at their stuff. Um, and you can see that you've now got RFCs mentioned here. So this must, be, this must be technically accurate. If it's an RFC, it's been validated and it's good, right? Um, you have uh, recommended IMAX traffic profiles. Acronyms are always good. Acronyms make you feel like you're dealing with other technical people, and they're right. Um, and then we have Fortinet. And we got even more footnotes um, all over the place. But I really like this note. All performance values are up to and may vary depending on system configuration. Great. So what is it? What, what can I expect out of this thing? Um, you also have uh, other things that can mislead you or make you confused. So for instance, they have uh, firewall throughput, which is actually, this is the technical definition of it. It's measured in packets per second. You can push across a network interconnected device 
um, without losing any packets, as per RFC 2544. I told you, I've been doing this for 15 years. It's in my head. Um, and then we have uh, Palo Alto, who just basically sort of seems to wing it and just say all performance capacities are measured under the yield testing conditions. That's the only footnote. It's, there's, there's nothing there. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, all these devices are great. They keep you secure. People rave about them. They've got their favorites. I, I've got friends who work at all these places. Um, but at the end of the day, once you go through the marketing machine and you go through the sales targets and the fact that, you know, you've got to keep up with the Joneses, this is what you end up with. Okay. So this is really what you end up with. If we sort of go back <laughs> and we look at that, we've got, um, we've got uh, concurrent connections, we've got throughput, and we've got uh, connections per second. Those, every single firewall manufacturer will put that out there and they'll say they've got the most of those. Um, but the trouble is, is that even the agreements over what those are and how they are defined, even if they are technically defined, are still technically defined loosely. Um, <laughs> For instance, throughput. Fortinet actually put the actual technical definition of throughput up there, but everyone here thinks of it in terms of gigabits, throughput, megabits, whatever, right? So let's talk about let's talk about throughput first. This is I'm from Massachusetts, as you know, and this is not my senator. Um, this is someone else's senator. His name is Ted Stevens, and uh, about five years ago, he stated that the internet is not like a truck that you dump something on. It's more like an interconnected series of tubes which I don't know what that means whatsoever. But basically, what you're dealing with is, is uh, throughput as a definition is the number of packets you can forward across the network uh, without packet loss. Um, but the reality is, is if we think about it just as throughput, uh, as in uh, bandwidth, right, which is how much data can I push across this network? If I look at an intrusion prevention device and it's got signatures enabled, it's got uh, app ID enabled, it's got NAT turned on or off, like all these things, impact the performance of the firewall in different weird ways. But even more fundamentally, the packet size that you push across that firewall severely uh, impacts performance. But how is it measured when you're looking at it from a perspective of um, uh, these data sheets? It's always maximum MTU UDP packets that don't hit any uh, regular expressions or anything else. They just hit the session tracking state table as easily as possible. So you end up with like a firewall that claims it can do 100 gigabits per second, whereas when you deploy it, you're gonna get 10 gigabits out of it. Um, and uh, that, that you know, normally drives the question, how often do you see a 1500 byte UDP frame across your network? Unless you're running IPTV for Bell Canada, you don't, never. Like a, a DNS packet's what, 70 bytes normally? 80 bytes? So this is not a good way to know what you're gonna get out of this thing. So they came up with a better way. They call it multi-protocol. There's a problem with this though, there's no RFC to define how to do multi-protocol throughput testing. So uh, if we look back at Cisco's definition again, they get a whole bunch of uh, protocols we don't use anymore. Um, I mean, they put that up there. Um, and then if we go and look at Checkpoint, they just simply say that it's uh, either this thing called iMix or a real world traffic blend with no definition of it whatsoever. Um, iMix is a grouping of different size packets that are typically seen across a network. It was developed by service providers. It's stateless and it's designed to test routers and switches, switches which don't care about state. What does a firewall care about? State, it's the number one thing it does, right? Whoop, sorry. Um, so you can't figure out what you've got going on there. They don't say what percentage of which traffic is running, how long the session runs for, what it's doing, how big the emails are getting delivered over IMAP. That's just not in the documentation. It's not in the data sheet. Then we have connections per second. Does someone want to, without reading my slide first, um, guess, uh, tell me what you would define as a TCP connection? Syn, Synac, ACK, that's it? What about data? Well, I gotta send data, right? And then I gotta get ACKs for the data. How do I close my connection? RSTs, man. If you're making a firewall data sheet, use RSTs. It's one pack instead of three or four. Come on, remember packets per second reduce performance. 
So what you see for connections per second testing is all kinds of janky stuff. I've seen sin, synac, ac, and that's it. That's the connection, and that's, they just drive that up and they fill up the state, and that's how fast it goes. I've seen synac, ac, reset. Um, and people who try to keep it a little bit more real will request a one-byte web page. Yep. Because we see lots of one-byte web pages all over the world, right? Um, <clears throat> other performance factors that are a consideration that never really rarely come up at all. Um, you can end up with IP address uh, hashing algorithms. So different tunables turned on the firewall to make it more optimal for a certain IP pool. Um, many of these data sheets will just use, say, 500 clients and 10 servers. Because when you're buying a 100 gigabit firewall, you are only going to have 500 clients and 10 servers for your entire network all the time, right? If you blow that up, if you put like a simulated gateway router and have the internet, like millions of IPs as your servers, um, you, I've seen crushing performance like brings it down five to 10% of what's put on the data sheet there. Um, also, just fundamentally, what is the benefit of this metric if it's not testing anything that you're gonna see in the real world in an employment, right? This, this is a repeating factor here, but um, if you're not aware of what you're doing, you got problems. And then we have concurrent connections. Uh, long story short, they like to do one byte web pages. So they send a get request 200 bytes, send a one byte web page back, and then they uh, sit on that socket connection for, I don't know, 10, 15, maybe two minutes. Uh, and then they send another request. So you've got this very low throughput trickle designed to layer up the entire uh, session table. Um, but more fundamentally, um, I like to say stupid math is stupid. If you take the maximum advertised throughput and divide it by the maximum number of concurrent connections, you end up with like half of uh, a kilobit in some instances in terms of what the firewall can do. So you really are, they're overkilling it in terms of trying to brag over each other for this. And then we have measuring protection. Guess what's not on the data sheet? How well the thing blocks attacks. Seriously, go back and look. There is no security effectiveness on the device. It's all about how fast it is and cool. But the way that this is tested is basically these steps. You start with my sales engineer ran a PCAP and showed it worked. And then level two is let's run Metasploit. Layer three is PCAP replay everything that I have here. Yes. Um, and then level four is, of course, plug in a live network. We'll prove it works. And once it's there, then you have to buy it because it's not part of your network, right? Because everyone just puts new stuff in their network every day. Nope. All right. Blame. The blame is RFC 3511. 3511 was written in 2001, back when calculator watches were cool. Um, and it, it said to test with HTTP only. It said to use giant UDP frames. Uh, for throughput, and then for connections per second, concurrent connections use HTTP. It made no specification as to the object size. Object size means size of web page. So that's why you get all of this all over the place stuff. Like my connections per second with a one byte web page, with a one kilobyte web page, with a no web page. Um, it, you have no idea. I don't hate RFC 3511. Um, it's sort of like hating the calculator watch. The calculator watch is really cool if it's 1999 again, right? Um, uh, the problem is that these devices have matured and changed. They're no longer just session tracking machines. They do data loss prevention, intrusion prevention. They, they make VPNs and cook your mom dinner when you're not going to get home on time, right? So you can't get upset at a testing methodology that's just not moved on with time. Other things to take into the note, like I said, large packets are easy. It's like Big Poppy visiting Toronto. Um, you, you can do a lot less frames per second if you do large frame sizes. So ask to see performance with the smallest frame size. That's a nice little trick to get to you know how badly this thing will suffer, right? If they're gonna show you how good it is, ask to see how bad it will be. Um, another thing of note is uh, an obsession with uh, average packet size. I see this over and over again. People will see metrics from their NetFlow data or other things say, my average packet size is 700 bytes. So I need to have all my packets look like they're 700 bytes. That's the wrong way around. That's bad thinking. Because when you look at your TCP traffic, you have all your SINs, your ACKs, your resets, all those things sit over here. And unless you've tuned your stack, you get an ACK for every data packet. 
And then you have all your data packets, which fill up the MTU as much as possible, right? The, the stuff in between is, is negligible in terms of seeing it. So it's basically, th this, is, this is very important to keep in mind when you're thinking about what your traffic looks like when you want to know what the performance looks like. The other thing on these data sheets is that they're all red line numbers. So if you look at the maximum concurrent connections and you look at the throughput, it can be logical to draw an assumption that you can do both at the same time. This is wrong. Maximum throughput is tested differently than maximum connections per second. Total number of VPN tunnels brought up is different than throughput. All of these things happen in isolation with a one configuration option enabled and everything else disabled. When you start turning them all on and off and fine tuning, turning on signatures on and off, it all goes out the window. Um, I mean, you can't get really upset at them for that because they can't make every single possible configuration on these things. Um, but you need, to, you need to know that that's how that's done. Um, and then if you look at just TCP stack parameterization on its own, like I said, number of IP addresses matters, but ACK prioritization matters. If you use delayed ACKs, if you're using Windows 10 stacks versus OS 10 versus Linux from 15 years ago, the number of package generated sizes and delays used are all going to be different. Um, same with ICW, same with retransmission, timeout values, and packet fragmentation. All of these things, you need to know what you've got going on there. So, solutions. Um, first and foremost, challenge your vendor. Your vendor does good work. I've visited every single one of them. I've seen their test labs. They know what they can actually do with these things. Um, but they, you know, also are under the gun to provide the right sort of metrics and uh, values to uh, compete against their own competitors, right? It's uh, keeping up with the Joneses. Um, look at independent test lab methodologies. NSS Labs is a good one. They actually do testing. I mean, all of these sort of Gartner-like groups are have some problems, but they're better than nothing, right? Better yet, I'd like to see a new RFC. Um, uh, the benchmarking working group at the IETF, which is probably the most boring working group at the IETF. Um, they're cool people, I watch what they do, but they just reissued their charter and restated that they are only interested in achieving lab performance results. They don't want to get in the messy weeds of realistic performance results. So there needs to be something that at least is a methodology of coming up with a way of testing that everyone can agree on. Um, I like chaos. Chaos in the network makes everyone feel safer, right? Um, there are better test tools available. There are ways to do it, but basically, by and large, what I what I witness in the field is inertia. It's um, my Occuvant Optive guy told me I should buy one of these two devices, so I'm going to buy one of these two de two devices. Right? Um, you're already sort of getting narrowed down in the field or having suggestions made to you, and and you know they've got good tribal knowledge. They know what this stuff can do, um, but. You need, to, uh, you need to challenge those assertions. If you're right the first time, it reduces headaches all the rest of the time on you, I think. Um, and, and that sort of leaves me with the last bullet note. I hope you guys, I know I'm burning through this real fast, but I hope you guys um, have gained a little bit of a deeper understanding of how these things work and know the right questions to ask now. Like, uh, you, everyone spends a lot of money on this stuff. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. If you ask the right questions, you can really um, sort of needle your sales guy, which will give you a little self-satisfaction. But it will also um, uh, challenge everyone to, to gain better confidence in terms of what they're doing. Aside from that, I'm the noble trout. You can't see it because it's, I'll adjust that slide. Um, and uh, I'm done if you got any questions. There you go, there's my Twitter handle. Yes? Say when you're doing a testing around DDoS, how often can you stand up to Testing on DDoS. Well, if they are good at preventing DDoS, um, they normally are tested for DDoS and they can hold up to DDoS. Um, what's more interesting is, think about it this way. If you, um, I, I meant to add a, uh, I wanted to add another slide in here that sort of showed the multi-architectural design of a firewall. 
um, you sort of got two kinds. You got software based, like uh, like say Checkpoint and McAfee, and then you've got hardware based, like Fortinet, Kind Apollo, Juniper, Cisco, right? Um, those hardware based ones, if you can hit an IPS rule that gets popped up to the general purpose CPU, uh, and you just throw that over and over and over again at the firewall, you will crush its performance capability of handling traffic overall, which is kind of a neat trick. I'm scanning room. Yes. A crowdsourced method of testing. So, uh, producing uh, replay attacks on, a, on a, uh, a specific set of protocols. I've. And then certifying that a um, The closest that I've seen to that is like independent testing labs. I haven't seen any, or, or sometimes, sometimes the service providers get really, really upset and then demand a standard gets ratified, but I haven't seen anything specific to firewalls and, and traffic mixes. Um, a lot of times, like uh, some of these vendors will actually open source their own tools um, and then try to use it as a means of like throwing chaos into the mix so that you test with my tool on the other firewall and obviously it performs poorly, but it's about the best. Yeah. Yes. You mentioned a lot about ask what is the performance of the firewall truly. If people ask you, that's why people ask you, how do I know what I need? But if I have a network with internet 100 megabytes, for example. Right. The people ask you, how do I actually know what I need? All right, he's asking the question, how do I know what I need? Um, that's what my company does. We make big, giant devices that actually can do this sort of testing, um, and they're very cool, and they're, all the people I mentioned today are my customers, which is why I'm kind of not being such a jerk towards them. Um, well, not my customers anymore, I'm a developer, but um, yeah, that, that, that's how you know. You've gotta, you, you can do your own testing, or some of the bigger players have proof of concept labs with test equipment that they can use to demonstrate to you uh, how it will work in your environment, which is a really good way to, to gain confidence. Yes? Okay, the question is the amount of time to spend testing a firewall to uh, get performance out of it. The size doesn't matter. Of course, there's a dollar cost associated with that. Um, but uh, normally, you can get pretty confident results within three days with someone who knows what they're doing. All right. Thanks, guys.